What's up? Welcome, welcome to 4 and 2. Um, let's all stand. I'll pray and then we'll get into some um, praise and worship. All good? <laughs> thank you, Lord. Lord Father, we thank you, Jesus, for tonight, Lord God. Lord Father, we just lift up, Lord God, you, Lord God, Jesus Christ, Lord Father, the center, Lord God, center of our lives, Lord God. And as we come to fellowship, as we come to hear your word, Lord Father, let it change us, Lord God. Let, it, let us not be the same, Lord Father. Let us receive, Lord Father, your Holy Spirit. Let us receive, Lord Father, what you have installed for us, Lord God, as we come open, Lord God, as we surrender afresh and anew. And we all said, Amen. Let's go. Come on, let's come together for one, two. Come on, come on, come on. There's room up here. We're going to come together. We're going to praise the Lord. Yeah, we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Fall down, start a holy riot. Feel this place now with the tongues of fire. Oh, break the strongholds, come and unleash heaven. We cry out, Lord, burn within us, make us bold as liars. Yeah, this is our.
inside a holy riot. Yeah, fill this place now with the tongues of fire. Break the strongholds, come and unleash heaven. Jesus, burn within us, make us bold as lions. Yeah, this is our revival anthem. Can you feel the darkness shaking? Oh, we are the dry bones rising. This will be our great awakening. This is our revival. Stop breaking, praise you when our world is caving. We will not, we will not be moved. Come on, declare it out tonight. We will praise you till we see your kingdom. Greater things are surely coming. You are God, you are on the move. We will praise you when. attention on the Lord tonight. We bring every thought captive. We bring our hearts before you, Jesus. We are yours tonight, Lord. Come and have your way. Come and have your way in me. Come and have your way in us tonight. Come on. Let's put our hands together. I raise, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Your be voice, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the
gotta rise tonight Lord, be enthroned on our praise Be enthroned on our praise Well, we're declaring out into the darkness tonight For one, two, the light The light of Jesus And I just feel we need to continue to push in On this just for a moment longer As we declare, as we lift up the mighty name of Jesus The darkness is fleeing tonight The chains are breaking in this place We gotta rise We see the darkness flee We see the darkness flee
my God, that is who you are. Well, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't, come on. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Light in the 
the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We can see it, Lord, tonight. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That is who you are. Hey, let's take this moment to, let's abandon ourselves for and to, as the band continues to sing, that is who you are. That is who you are. The King of Kings. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for who you are. King of kings, Lord of lords. We honor you, Lord God. All we want is you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for your son. This man, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for him. He came and changed my life. Lord God, we just lift you up. We give you all praise. We want more of you. There's nothing else in this world we want but you, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let it rain on us, Lord, as we surrender afresh and anew. As this night marks a new night for us. As we continue to breathe in and let go of everything that's inside. All we want is you, Lord. All we want is you, Jesus. One touch can rearrange our lives, Lord. A moment with you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that the victory is here, Lord God, and freedom is here. We gladly receive it. But we thank you, Son. Thank you, Son. We give thanks to your Son. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. And we all said, Amen. You can grab your seats. Welcome, welcome to 412. If you're new here, welcome. This is how we do church. I'm just going to pray for the tithes as the ushers come. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the tithes. We thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Simeon. Thank you, Father. We just lift up the tithes over to you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you multiply it, Lord God, into your kingdom. Lord Father, we thank you, Jesus, that what we receive, our wage, whatever, we already know it's yours, Lord, for us working people. <laughs> We already know it's yours, Lord God, and we just hand it over to you. Do what you got to do with it. Multiply it to your kingdom, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, awesome. Amen. Ushers, you may ush, like Pastor Murray says. Cool. So um, my name's John. I'm going to share the notices. And then from there, I'll just share a little um, encouragement to the body. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So um, we have our 30-year celebration coming up. It's a conference, and it's going to be fire. So if you're ready for it, man, we encourage you guys to come. It's free. Invite. Make sure you invite your friends. I always say it. Invite, invite, invite. Man, it's not by chance, you know, God's put somebody on your heart. Invite them along. They could be going through, you know, a difficult situation or they could be going through, you know, life or death. And four and two, we hold the keys. We hold the keys to this world that is hurting, this world that needs a little bit of light. Uh, not a little, a lot of light. <laughs> so um, invite your friends, invite your family members. Do what you got to do to get them here. It's going to be life changing. It's, um, we got like we have a church, a big church here at Celebration, and we have multiple churches a part of Celebration, and they're all coming here to the mothership. And it's going to be like one massive party because it's going to be like, you know, COVID and all that. It's been restricted people to come over um, from overseas. But, um, you know, it's going to be like a massive family reunion. So uh, I encourage you guys to be there. It's on the 24th to the 28th. Um, it's also free. So you don't need to pay anything. Um, just pop along. I guess for... Guys that are working, take time off. Take time off. This, these are important dates. They're going to change your life. Um, I'm not just saying it. It's actually going to change your life. Um, awesome. I'm going to pass it on to Haley. She's going to share about some things, some exciting things coming along. Woohoo! Hey, everybody. As I'm sure you're aware, um, we had the Franklin Graham tour coming to Christchurch in November. Um, so, hands up, who's been to a crusade? Yeah, one. Yeah, so this is an awesome opportunity, something that um, hasn't really come to this generation yet. Um, so, me and Nader have been given the opportunity to work for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association that is helping run the Franklin Graham God Loves You Tour. Um, just working for this ministry, you can literally see the blessing of God all over it the blessing to come into our nation, not ask for anything, but that we just join with the Lord and what He wants to do. 
They're not asking for money. They're not asking for offerings or anything like that, but just that we say yes. Um, Franklin Graham is the son of Billy Graham. If you don't know who Billy Graham is, in my opinion, he's one of the greatest evangelists of all time. He came here maybe 63 years ago. He ran a crusade um, eight nights at Lancaster Park, if you know what that is. Um, 133,000 people came to it just in Christchurch. It's 133,000, no, 133, yeah. Thousand people showed up for the crusade. Um, I'll just play a clip, a quick clip of um, Franklin Graham and his ministry. Our families, our friends, our neighbors, even people that we're going to church with, many are lost without Christ. There's no other way for you to be saved. There's no other way for your sins to be forgiven except through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's an urgency because once you leave this world, you don't have another chance. The chance is here, the chance is now, the chance is today. God loves you. He made you, He created you. He wants to give you the opportunity to choose. There's a world out there that's dying right there at our doorstep. And the question is, what are we gonna do about it? I just can't sit back and do nothing. I told the Lord to take my life and He could spin me however He wanted to spin me. And that night I prayed that prayer, I meant it. Maybe a year or two later, I felt God calling me to go into full-time ministry. I was afraid people may compare me to my father and, and I would always be a disappointment to people. And I just re realized oh, that wasn't my problem. My problem needed to be taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the best of my ability. I want you to know that emptiness in your life, that big hole in your life, only God can fill that. There's power in the gospel. And that's what's important. They could care less what I say. It's about what God says, and it's His gospel. God loved you so much that He sent His Son out of heaven to this earth on a rescue mission. Rescue mission. When you tell a person that Jesus Christ is God's Son, when you tell a person that He shed His blood and He took our sins to the cross, there's Holy Spirit-filled power in that message. When He stretched out His arms, nailed to that cross, he did it because He loves you. We have all these opportunities, but we may not have them tomorrow. The scripture says when you read Revelation that it's going to be more and more difficult as the day approaches. We're losing ground and we're losing it quickly because we're not being attentive to the freedoms that we have. The church has just a little window of opportunity in this country. We got to do something that's bold, something that's different. Let's use our resources, let's use our gifts, our talents to take this gospel message to the ends of this earth. Awesome. And what I love about his message is it's so clear and it's so simple. And just the, um, the heart of the ministry is not to exalt anything else but the name of Jesus. And what they want to do is they want to come into our nation and into our city. What they want to do is just share the gospel and see the kingdom of God advanced here in our city. And, you know, that's what I love, that there's nothing else. And one of the things they say that they, these crusades are a testimony to the world, to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God is inviting us as a church to unify and come behind the gospel and testify to the world of who Jesus is. And, you know, I just really know that there's an invitation, not just from the ministry, but for God himself to join in what God wants to do in our city and nation. There's an invitation to come and move in the things of God. And, you know, um, Everything that God is placing before us, I want to encourage you just to say yes. Yes, Lord. Everything is to prepare us for what is to come. Everything is to prepare us and prepare the church and equip the church to see souls saved and see the kingdom advanced here on earth. And, you know, that's, I, just love, I just love everything about this ministry. It's just so easy. It's so simple. Um, you can't not say no. But um, just in preparation for the crusade, the crusade's on November the 12th. Um, it's one night only. Um, it's a short night, two and a half hours. The gospel is preached for 15 minutes. Um, it's open to everyone, um, your friends, your family, your enemies. Invite everyone. Pray to God. Ask who he wants you to invite. But don't hold back an invitation. Everyone needs to hear the gospel. We have two events that we're running. One is 
well, the one we're hosting here, the prayer and worship on the 17th of August, encourage you to come. Come and be a part of the body of Christ. Stand in oneness together as a church and let's pray for souls. Let's pray for our families, our friends. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for the harvest. Let's exalt the name of Jesus in this place and let's represent the youth of Christchurch. There's actually a couple more prayer meetings happening that night as well. There's one in Wellington and Auckland, and we're all pushing into the same thing. And, you know, naturally, yeah, we're separated, but together we can come together and just see God move over our nation. This, um, also, another thing is like, it's like what Murray said, let's, let's come in and remember the time that we prayed for our city. When God comes, we can look back to these moments and like remember that we were part of the move of God, that we sowed our prayers and we joined in the Spirit and pushed in for our city and the move of God. The other event we have, sorry, do we actually have the slides? Um, is we're running a, a youth evangelistic training night. It's called Send Me. This is out of the commission in Isaiah where God says, who will go for us? Who shall I send? And he replied, here I am, send me. Through this event, we really felt God is going to move. God is going to commission the youth of the city. It's open to youth and young adults of the city. There's going to be prayer, oh, sorry, worship. There's going to be testimonies. Um, we're going to have a special guest come from the U.S. to train us. Really practical keys on how to lead someone to the Lord. Really practical keys on how to share your testimony and share the gospel. Well, I also know that God is going to show up tonight and commission us personally. He's going to meet with us, meet with the youth of the city and just put a fire in our hearts to God and share the gospel and lead people to Jesus. The cool thing about this is these tools that we're going to get, they're not just for November the 12th. They're actually like, we want to see testimonies. We want to hear testimonies of people using, youth using these skills before then to lead people to Christ. Um, so we want to invite everybody to this. And just want to encourage you to, to say yes to the Lord. You're not just saying yes to a one-time event. You're saying yes to God moving in our city, to seeing souls saved. I believe that this is the beginning of something more, a move of God, a move of God in our city. And we want to be, we want to say yes to the invitation of God to call us out and into his presence. So just want to encourage you just to say yes to the Lord. Join with us, not just as a ministry, but just as the family of God as we push into what he wants and what he's going to do. Amen. Cool. Awesome. Um, just on that, um, there's going to be like multiple churches coming here. And it's going to be awesome to see the unity between all different churches and like how we're all going to come and be one. So it's going to be exciting. Definitely get there. Definitely make it. Prioritize it. Um, if you need to write it in your calendar, write it in your calendar. If you've got a calendar, I'm guessing you just do reminders. Uh, the alarm will tell you. Um, but yeah, awesome. Sweet. We good? We good? Awesome. I like a little bit of feedback. Helps the um, the person here. I've got a little bit of time. Um, awesome. We're going to jump into Acts. And it's talking about um, John and Peter. the cruising to the temple. And um, as they go to the temple, there's this, um, at the gates, there's a, there's a beggar. And this beggar is just, he's a lame beggar. He was born lame. Um, and he's, he's chilling there, he's waiting, he sees two guys rock up, he's just going to go and ask them for money. And we're going to jump into verse 6, it says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 7, And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles um, received strength. I share that scripture because it was a perfect opportunity for me to do what these two men of God did. And it was quite funny because I was, it wasn't the perfect, like, well, it wasn't like he was lame. The only thing is he was asking for some dosh, some mullah. And then I was just like, okay. I was like, silver and gold. I didn't, no, I didn't say that, but I, I was just like, oh, shucks, bro, I don't. I didn't have any cash on me, man. I roll Ipos. And then his response was, oh, that's everyone here. 
And I was just like, oh, thank you. And then I was like, walked away, I carried on walking with my family to the car, jumped in the car, and then I was just like to my wife, shucks, should I give him money? And then um, my wife was like, uh, she was just, oh, what, whatever, what, what God's saying to you. And I was just like, oh, no, nah, I won't give him money because I don't know what he'll do with the money. You know, he could, I could be a source of him feeding to his addiction. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a good Samaritan and I'm going to walk into the sushi, buy him a feed. So I went in and got, got him a feed. And then I was just like, here you go, bro. Um, I don't have any money, but here. I noticed you've been standing here for a while. Here's some food. And then I was just like, sweet. He said, sweet, all good. And he goes, oh. He said some other things, but then I was just sort of like, oh, yeah. Um, and then I was like, oh, maybe the brothers and sisters, whoever comes through those doors that came out will come and bless you with some mula. And then I was just like, sweet, bless you, bro. And then I took off. Instantly when I took off and I jumped in the car, drove off, and I was like, I wonder if he's still there. So I drove past, saw him, still there. And then I was just like, on the highway, because we live in Kapoi, I was heading out, and then that scripture came to my mind. And then I went to sleep, went to work, and then again that scripture came to my mind, and I was just like, shucks, that was the perfect opportunity for me to share the gospel with this man. And I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I failed, but like I didn't. I didn't do what the scripture says. And I sort of was like looking at myself, I was just like, man. That was the perfect opportunity to share Jesus Christ with him. Even though he was begging for money, begging for something, at the end of the day, all he needed was Jesus in his life. You know, once you, like, at the end of the day, like in my mind, I was just started thinking, oh, shut, shut, should have should have told him about this man, Jesus. And I was just like, man, that's, that's, <laughs> In my, in my mind, I like to beat myself up. That's the thing that's when my melancholy comes out and then it starts to, oh, come on, news. And I was just like, shucks, shoulda, shoulda done it, shoulda, coulda, woulda, but didn't. Um, and I want to say that, you know, even though that opportunity came up, four and two, we still have more opportunity in the future as we continue to do God's work you know, more opportunity like that will come, come upon our lives. And I want to say for and two that, you know, as a youth and young adults ministry, you guys carry the key. You know, you guys carry the key. We've had, we've had um, visions of, you know, some of the leaders shared a, um, a dream that they had or a vision and it was we carry the keys it was like the enemy holding the keys for the ones in the world dangling it above their heads and they're just walking they're walking aimlessly because they don't know what's you know what is right what is true and for and to on encourage you that we carry the keys we carry what this world needs we carry inside of us the gold which is Jesus the gold, which is what they're asking for. Even though they ask for money, we can repay them with salvation, which is way better than money because money is only temporary, yeah? So I was like, as I started listening, oh, well, looking into the Word, and it illustrates one of the signs because it's four and two, and the church as a body, celebration has been called to signs and wonders. And the signs and wonders is literally up here in Acts 2. So in Acts 2, they get filled with the Spirit. Holy Spirit fills them. And then in Acts 3, they talk about in the scripture that I shared, signs and wonders. And man, there's going to be signs and wonders for you guys for and two. At your workplace, at uni, at school, at home with your family. You know, there's going to be signs and wonders, and just don't let it just drop for one two. Grab it. If you have ears to hear, grab it for one two. 
Because at the end of the day, you're the influencer. You're the one that carries the, the gold that we're sharing about. Influence is so powerful these days, 4 and 2. And if you have influence on your life, look how many people you can attract to this man Jesus. Look at how many people's, how many lives could change from them hearing this message, hearing this message about Jesus and what he done. We carry that fire, four and two. And Murray's been sharing about the gatherings about what is the fire. Do you even know what we're talking about when you say, come fire, come? And I was just like, shucks. That fire is for us to be, you know, refine us. You know, it's the Holy Spirit, but it's for us, all that ugliness that's inside, because we don't think that we're good enough to share the message, or we don't think like we're right to talk to somebody, or... Man, you are enough, four and two. Youth and young adults, you are enough. Believe it. Start to, start to saturate it in your mind. Start to, you know, self-talk. Bit of mana. Talk yourself up. It's not cocky, but just, it's far from cocky. It's about talking yourself up so you can go and do the works. Yeah? So declare the name of Jesus what he's done in your life, what he's changed. You know, start to declare those things, those small little tips for him too. Declare what he's done in your life. The change that he's done in your mind, declare it. The enemy hates it. Um, and just carry on. Be the influence. Awesome. That's me. I'm going to hand it over to my wife. She's going to come up. Awesome. Hey, 412. How you doing? That's good. Ra, thanks, Ra. <laughs> How's everyone else doing? Good. Awesome. Like John said, you can give some feedback. <laughs> awesome. Look at that smooth transition up there. <laughs> How good. How good. <laughs> cool. Let's just pray. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Lord, what an honor to, to love you, to serve you, to know you. And we thank you, Father, for the work that you did on the cross, that we can have relationship with you, Jesus, that we can be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we can share the name of Jesus to, to the harvest, to our friends, to our family who don't yet know you. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in these days. Holy Spirit, as your church, as your bride, we come into agreement with all that you're doing in your church in these days. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. Lord, we take authority right now in the atmosphere. Lord, I thank you tonight that the enemy must flee. Lord, that when your light comes in, that all darkness must flee, that the enemy must bow to the name of Jesus. Lord, that we overcome by the blood of Jesus and by the power of our testimony. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We thank you that you're going to evict the enemy out of this place tonight. I thank you you're going to heal minds tonight. Lord, we thank you for the move of God that is coming in this city, in this nation, Lord, and in the nations. And we welcome the move of God. We welcome the glory of God. We welcome the angels of God. Come in, come in, come in. You know, God spoke and He said to me, I'll go wherever I'm welcome. And Lord, we want to welcome you in this place. Come Holy Spirit, let the entourage of heaven fill this place tonight. Let every person who hasn't experienced your power be touched by your Holy Spirit tonight. Make yourself real. Jesus, like John said, you're the only thing we have. Silver or gold we do not have, but what we have we give. We give to the harvest. And what we have is Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Awesome, it's so exciting what the, the Lord is doing in these days. And I just want to preach quickly, Lord, let it be quick in Jesus' name, about the, a few different things. But 
you know, I want to declare that there is a move of God. There is a move of God. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so exciting, the days that we live in. It says in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Pour out, not dribble, not spit a little bit. Pour out. He will pour out his spirit. You know, we're living in the last days and it's getting darker and darker and darker in the world. And the time is getting more desperate. We are running out of time. And the move of God is coming. You know, God is coming to His church. I know it in my spirit. I can see it. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. His Holy Spirit is coming. His glory is coming. His fire, like John mentioned before, His refining fire is coming. You know, and He's coming to us, His church. He's coming to clean us up. But He's not only coming just to us, He's coming to us so that He can move through us to the harvest. You know, in 412, I, I want to declare that the move of God is coming and I want all of us to be there. I don't want us to miss the move of God. I don't want us to be sitting in religion. Oh, it shouldn't be done like that. What are they doing? You know, it should be done this way, that way. No, we want to be with the Holy Spirit is. We want to be where the anointing is. We need to be where the Spirit of God is. It's not time to muck around in these days. It's not time to play church. It's not time to play Jesus. It's not time to label ourselves a Christian and go out and live like the devil. It is not time because we're running out of time. He's coming. The glory of God is coming. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. You know, Jesus, He's so worthy. He's so worthy of our lives. He gave it all. He gave it all. He gave it all. In Colossians 1 message, I'm going to jump to 26 to 29. The mystery has been kept in the dark for a long time, but now it's out in the open. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know this rich and glorious secret inside and out, regardless of background, regardless of religious standing. The mystery in a nutshell is just this. Christ is in you, so therefore you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It's that simple. That is the substance of our message. We preach Christ, warning people not to add to the message. We teach in a spirit of profound common sense so that we can bring each person to maturity. To be mature is to be basic, Christ, no more, no less. You know, that's our message. Excuse me, sorry. Christ is our message. Jesus is our message. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus will deliver us. Jesus will set us free. It's by His blood. It's by what He did on the cross. You know, and the enemy, the slanderer will come through people and he will try and accuse and he will try, the spirit of Antichrist will try and come and remove Jesus out of the society, out of our mouths. The, the enemy wants our mouths to be kept quiet, but for one, two, we need to testify in these days. We need to open our mouths. You know, God told me that the voice of his church will be heard in these days. And it's not our voice, it's actually his voice through us. You know, people... The power of God, the move of God's restoring His church in these days. You know, there's coming a time where His presence is going to be so undeniable that the harvest will have to stop and look and say, what is happening? What are these signs and wonders and miracles? How is that person delivered from depression? I want that. I need that. And they're going to run. They're going to run to the presence of God. They're going to run to the only answer. They're going to run to Jesus. I'm so excited about this crusade to see a stadium full of people as we get to sit under the gospel, the most powerful, transforming message that there ever is and ever will be. You know, we preach Christ. We preach Jesus. He's the one. He's the one who's delivered me from every battle I've faced. There is nothing impossible for Him. And He will deliver me the battles that I have coming in the future. He will deliver me. He will set me free because He's done it before and I know He'll do it again. There's nothing that's impossible for our God. You know, He's living today for one too. And we are His witness. We are His testimony. We are living, walking, breathing testimonies of the gospel. 
You know, we need, we need you for it too. We need the army of God. We need creative items up here every week, showing the people the message, making it clear. This is what Jesus did. Come on, we need you. We need the army of God. We need the singers to sing, the dancers to dance, the, the drama people to act because we need to make the message so clear. We need to make it so clear that every youth and young adult in this city knows about Jesus and what he did. It says in Revelations 12, 11, they defeated him through the blood of the lamb and the bold word of their witness. You know, witness is evidence and proof. And we are living proof. You know, if God has done something in your life, you are living proof of Jesus and that he's still alive. You know, oh, I just want everyone to know God's coming. Don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss the move of God. You know, and the most simplest key I can give is just be where his spirit is. Be where he is. Be where the anointing is. Be where the life of God is. And that also equals not being where he's not, you know, not being where his anointing isn't, not being in the places where people talking back and forth, gossiping, slandering, rumours. That's not my God. That's not the spirit of God. You know, we need to be where the anointing is. We need to get around people who are filled with the spirit of God, who will challenge us. I have a couple of girls that we message and literally all we message each other is scriptures. <laughs> it sounds like a little bit religious. It's definitely not. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> we Honestly, we like just scripture bomb each other through the week and man, has God showed you this? Has God? But it's, it's life. It's being where the presence of God is. It's, it's sharpening. It's encouraging. It's not religious. It's being where the life of God is. We need to be around people who are like, just testify, man, God did this in my life this week. We need to be there. We need to be around that. Man, God is doing something for one too, and I don't want any one of us to miss it. This youth and young adult ministry will be in the move of God. We will be where His Spirit is. We will be there, and we will be His willing army saying, send me, I'll go. Send me, I'll go. I'll die to myself because I know how worthy you are. Dying to self is, you know, doing whatever God asks you. Do you think I enjoy getting up here? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I will say yes to God because I know Him and I know what He's done for me and I'll give it my all because of Him. Is it comfortable? No. Is there warfare? Yes. Is there battles? Do I battle in my mind before I get up? Yes. Would I choose not to? Preferably yes. But I want to say yes to the call of God. I want to say yes to Him because He means everything to me. You know, for one, two, I guarantee as you encounter Him, as you encounter the Spirit of God, you won't be able to say no. You'll be like, send me. You know, when someone in your school is sick, the Spirit of God, your heart will begin to beat and you'll just get uncomfortable and you'll know, oh my gosh, God wants me to go pray for them. <laughs> but the Spirit of God will just rise up within us and we'll, be, we'll, we'll have the, the boldness, the courage to go and say, hey, um, God actually healed me from anxiety. I was wondering, did you want me to pray for you? That's the move of God. That's the move of God that's coming. That's it right there. The testimony of Jesus going out. The testimony of Jesus being upon our lips. You know, a testimony can be as small as, um, last night it was real cute. We got home from the worship night. Who was at the worship night last night? Dang. <laughs> um, got home from the worship night and our oldest boy, he's three. It was bedtime. He wasn't in bed. <laughs> it was late once we got home and then, I went to my room and was just prepping for tonight and reading the word. And he comes in, he goes, Mama, what are you doing? And I just said, oh, I'm just, you know, having some time with God. I'm having some God time. I'm just reading my Bible and I'm just talking to God. And then he goes away and I thought he had gone off to bed. 
And then he comes back like 10 minutes later and I'm about to yell out, River, get into bed. Luckily I didn't because he comes in with his Bible book and he comes in and he goes, Mama, I'm just going to my room to have some God time. And then he walks out and I just thought, man, like that's small, but to me that was everything. I was like, dang, <laughs> like thank you, Lord. You know, people are watching our lives. People are watching our lives, whether we know it or not. Do we have Jesus on our lives? Do we have Jesus on our lips? You know, the, the lips are a reflection of what's in our heart. Get the band to come, please. Thank you. <laughs> I see the Spirit of God going into the schools through you, through you, through your testimony. The harvest needs Jesus to be real in our lives. The harvest are desperate that Jesus is real and we need to show them. We need to show them that Jesus is real, that He's still alive and well today, that He still heals, that He still delivers, that He still sets free. Because there is no answer in the world. There is no answer in the world. You know, who will go? Who will go? There's more notes, but I'm just going to finish with the scripture and then we'll just pray. I shared at prayer last week that I felt the Lord say that He was giving us 412 in this generation, uh, you know, King David from the Bible, David's resolve. David's resolve. And there's a scripture, I want to share it in 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47. It's in the message version. And this is when David, a young kid, is about to go fight this massive giant called Goliath. Has anyone, you guys heard that story? You kind of hear those stories as you grow up, eh? Sometimes I think when you hear them when you're younger, it almost takes away the power of it. You need to go back and read it <laughs> to realise. But this little boy, this little kid was going up against this, this massive giant. You know, and one thing he said is, who is this uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine that would come against the living God? You know, who is this enemy that would defy the armies of the living God? Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> who is this enemy that would come against my God? And that's the resolve I believe God is giving us forward to that any enemy, anything that opposes God and what He has for you and your friends and your family's lives, that there will be something that rises up in our spirit and says, what is this enemy that opposes the living God? What is this enemy that opposes the armies of the living God? Who is this? I believe God is going to deliver from unfamiliar, sorry, from familiar spirits. You know, sometimes we get so familiar with things that aren't actually meant to be part of our life. Sometimes we think, oh, that's just me. I'm just shy. Or I, my mind, I, I always have a, a racing mind. That's just me. You know, but Jesus paid the price on the cross that we could live in freedom. So it's a lie of the enemy to say that we have to live with those enemies. In 1 Samuel 17, it says, this is David talking to Goliath. You come at me with sword and spear and battle axe. I come at you in the name of God of the angel armies, the God of Israel's troops whom you curse and mock. This very day, God is handing you over to me. I'm about to kill you. Cut off your head and serve up your body and the bodies of your Philistine buddies to the crows and coyotes. Wow. <laughs> the whole earth will know that there's an extraordinary God in Israel and everyone gathered here will learn that God doesn't save by means of sword or spear. The battle belongs to God. He's handing you to us on a platter. You know, and all the enemies, all the enemies that come against this generation, depression, anxiety, self-hatred, self-harm, addiction, pornography, sexual sin, all the enemies that face us. You know, God is giving us David's resolve that we would say by the power of the Spirit of God, who are you? You don't belong in my life. 
You don't belong in my friend's life. You don't belong in my family's life. Get out. And he didn't use the weapons made by humans. He didn't use swords. He didn't use the world's answered answers, sorry. He, he came in the name of God. He came with the power of God. We're going to stand and, and pray tonight. And one thing I felt the Lord say tonight is, I want to pray for our leaders first. And we're going to pray together for our leaders. And I just know God wants to encourage his leaders tonight. You know, if we think of an army, it's like if an army's all lined up, the leaders are at the front. And the enemy wants to take out the ones at the front so there's a gap in the line and the enemy can get through to everyone behind them. You know, when someone's not here or someone's missing or hurt or broken or discouraged or going through sickness, whatever it is, it's like there's a gap in the line and the enemy's like, yes, I can get in there. I can get in there. So we want to pray for our leaders and I believe that God is going to encourage leaders tonight. He's going to expose assignments of the enemy, lies and whispers, and he's going to bring clarity to the call of God. He's going to encourage our leaders and then we're going to Pray for um, everybody. And I, I feel like there's more God wants to do in the area of healing of the mind. You know, we've been looking at healing in the mind a little bit. And I just know that there's minds in here that God wants to touch tonight, that God wants to heal. I've been hearing testimonies of how God's been healing minds. I know God's been healing my mind. I want to thank the Lord for that and testify to that. I remember feeling in the services, God just kept saying, I'm healing your mind, I'm healing your mind, I'm healing your mind. And it felt like a sovereign thing. And then what I began to realise, God gave me a scripture around how He writes His law, His ways on our minds, on our hearts. What I began to realise is that God was actually exposing all these familiar thought patterns in my mind. All these thoughts I had been believing that weren't of His Word, that weren't of Him. And it was over a period of time and he's still doing it. And I was like, hey God, you're doing what you said. You're healing my mind. He was exposing bit by bit, bit by bit. That's not me. That's the enemy. That doesn't belong to you. That's the enemy. You know, and God is healing our minds for one too and I believe he wants to do it even more. So we're going to stand. We're going to, we'll just start with the keys. Might get ready for I speak Jesus. But, um. Let's just lift our hands to the Lord wherever we are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just want to call forth the leaders. Could you just come and stand up here? The prayer team leaders. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's stretch out our hands toward our youth and young adults leaders. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If any leaders are serving, you're welcome to come down as well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for your leaders. Thank you for their minds. I thank you that they have the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you touch them afresh and anew tonight. Holy Spirit, move upon them even now. Holy Spirit, anoint. Holy Spirit, refresh. The call of God, let the call of God come upon the leaders, Lord. Let the call of God come upon your leaders. Let us not be able to say anything but yes in me, Lord. Let the call of God come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Release your anointing even now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we take authority over every thought, over every assignment, over every attack, 
over every weapon forged against them. We declare it will not prevail. We refute every tongue that has accused these leaders. I pull down every instrument of the enemy that has come against them. And I declare clarity tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare breakthrough tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We release your anointing afresh and anew. If we want to continue to stretch out your hands and pray, pray for the ones who are at the front of the battle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. There's a new mantle coming upon your leaders. I feel like tonight, leaders, that God is giving us the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the, the soft hearts to see the move of God that's coming, to sense the urgency to prepare, to prepare, to get with the Lord, to not forsake meeting, to not forsake intimacy with the Lord. I feel like the Lord is rearranging priorities even now, that He's challenging, He's shifting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We release your anointing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to invite our leaders to turn around as you're ready. And we're going to pray for you, 412. 412, let's just lift our hands to the Lord. Close your eyes and wherever you're standing, as the leaders just turn around and face 412, we're going to pray. For this young generation, we're going to pray for them. 412, just receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this generation. Lord, we thank you, Father, that they are yours. Lord, that they are called, Lord, to live, to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We pray for this generation. We thank you for a fresh outpouring. Lord, you promised that in the last days you would pour out your Spirit. Lord, so now pour out your Spirit upon 412. Lord, upon your young people. Anoint your young people to go. Anoint them to take the Gospel out to the highways, to the byways. Anoint them to pray for the sick. Anoint them to bring deliverance in their schools, in their unis, in their workplaces. We pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 
Awesome. We're just going to finish with a song. I want to encourage you if, you, if you feel the Spirit of God moving on your life, if you want to respond to the call of making Jesus known, I want to invite you up to come and worship, to lift your hands, to abandon to the Lord, to say, yes, Lord, send me. Yes, Lord, I'll testify. Yes, Lord, I'll dance for you. I'll sing for you. I'll preach for you. I'll clean the toilets for you, whatever it is. Thank you, Lord. I just want to ask too, before we, before we sing, is there anyone here that's, that's new and responding to Jesus for the first time, I think? I see over here. Awesome. Cool. We'll just finish on the song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the call of God. Yeah. Thank you for the call of God. I want to invite you up for one too. We're saying yes to the Lord tonight. <laughs> We're saying yes to Jesus tonight. We're saying send me. Use me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus yeah I just want to speak the name of Jesus Addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope And there is freedom I speak Jesus It's your name is
want to end by praying around the mind because we felt like God wanted to heal in the mind so if there's anyone who would, who would like prayer who's been battling in the area of your mind maybe it be depressive thoughts or tormenting thoughts that you don't want you can't get rid of or suicidal thoughts or like a, a cloud like a heavy dark cloud over your mind we just want to pray before we close. We believe that Jesus still heals today, that God still heals today. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Awesome. Just want to invite anyone, if you wanted um, prayer in the area of your mind, just to lift your hands if you're comfortable to do that and one of our prayer team will come and pray. Awesome, can we have some prayer? Prayer team over here and over here as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I even believe sovereignly that God is healing minds. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing minds tonight. Now I believe that God is bringing a peace and it says in the Word that His peace surpasses all understanding. (laughs) There's no peace like the peace of God. Lord, I pray even tonight that you would come with peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I thank you for healing in the mind tonight. Even through the music, I believe the Holy Spirit is moving right now. Sovereignly, God is healing in the mind. He's shifting thought patterns. He's breaking strongholds. God doesn't give as the world gives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. If you um, uh, haven't been prayed for yet, just encourage you to stay and we'll come pray. But um, that's the end of our service too. So bless you guys. Testify of what the Lord is doing in your life. Hang around in the cafe and testify. Amen. Thank you, Lord.